Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Drop a like, subscribe, click the bell icon if you like the content. Check out the top right eye for even more nice links. In the last video, we set up Lua. We have set up all the stuff we need to work with this game. This video is all about explaining Lua to you because it might be so that you don't really understand Lua. You haven't worked with Lua. It's not that regular to work with and it's it's quite hard to understand in the beginning. So I want to give you guys a quick walkthrough of the, the stack and the Lua states and what that means. And there's a few good resources on Lua. I'd say there's a great ebook that you can get. It's free. It's on an older version of Lua, but all you have to do is Google Lua PDF ebook or whatever, and you'll find tons of material there. Otherwise, there are plenty of tutorials. And of course, you'll learn about it throughout this video series, just not as quickly as you might like to. But let's go and just get started here. So a Lua is a scripting language. It's live. It's interpreted real time. It's not something you compile. It runs on this interpreter. So when you create a Lua, Lua state it's called that's like a, its own little world of Lua okay you create that state you initialize it and you you create a stack for it you open libraries and you initialize it by including stuff to it just like you do in C++ and then you can start using it you can also close that state and you can create more states so imagine different little bubbles of Lua states which have their own memory assigned to them where you can we can do different things on different Lua states so what you do in one state won't reflect the other state that's how that works. A very simple explanation of it. And a great thing about Lua is everything is handled as something called a stack. And this might seem very confusing in the beginning. And it was very confusing to understand in the beginning for me. But a good tip here is to really give it time. Practice, give it time, try it up try stuff out, you know, don't, don't be afraid, don't ever be afraid, always try new things. And I want you guys to just give it as much time as you want here. So practice Lua and you, I promise you will understand. You guys are absolutely amazing. You will understand it. You just need to give it time. So let's get started here. Let's create a Lua state before I talk too much. Lua state is a variable. You should create a pointer of this because it's going to allocate a new state into this pointer. The way we do that, is we say Lua state pointer L equals Lua L new state. Don't use the regular new state because it's a lot slower. You want to use a Lua L new state because we're using Lua JIT. All right, there you go. Lua new state that created a new state in memory for Lua. And it's going to start this whole Lua process. And this process is going to keep running in the background. So it's like live interpreting whatever script files you give it, whatever code you do is always there interpreting it. It's not compiling it. So you can change code real time. You can put in new stuff real time. You don't need to recompile it. So you have the state now. Let's initialize it. Initialize Lua state load libraries and this is something you always do for Lua all right if you don't include things in C++ of course you won't have access to the libraries the same thing here you need to include your libraries into the Lua state so we can use different functions like math and all these things so let's say Lua open libs Lua l open libs you can open one lib with lib or you can open all the libraries at once with open libs and I'm going to do that. I'm going to open all the libraries. Once that's done, we have that there and we're going to close it down here because of course, just like you end a C++ program, you need to tell that process, the background Lua process when to stop. So let's return zero here for the C++ program. But before that, okay, remember before the return zero, otherwise you're not going to be able to close the state. You want to close a Lua state, Lua close L, boom. Now you have started it and closed it. And in between will be all our code. And the code we're going to run, of course, I'm going to try to run this first and see that it doesn't crash. Hello world printed out perfectly and we're good. So the thing we're going to learn today is the Lua stack. And this is a good introduction to it, I think. So let's open up a paint here. It's the best way to show you guys how the stack works. Hopefully you understand how a stack works in C++. Same, same principle here. Think of a card, a stack of cards. And you can only place cards on top and remove cards from the top. You can't touch the bottom of the stack. You can never place or remove anything from the bottom of the stack. All right. You can access things anywhere in the stack at any time, but you can't place things wherever you want and you can't remove things from wherever you want. Remember that. Okay. Always from the top. So we have our stack. This is a beautiful stack. Just ignore the top here because it's unlimited. Okay. Imagine it's practically unlimited here. All the memory you have just here like that. And we can add things in the bottom. So let's say I add a little thing here to the stack and I'm going to use a beautiful brush here and write 20. And this is a number. I'm going to add another thing where I say 
it's a string so my name maybe i got a third thing here and i'm gonna call it i don't know a boolean so a boolean is either a one or a zero so i'll add a false boolean here that's false and this is the stack beautiful what is on top and what is on the bottom what did i add first guys it was the 20 right so that would always be the bottom on top of that is my name and on top of that is the boolean the zero or the one and this means that this is the top of the stack but how do we access things from this stack well there are two ways there is numbers and there's negative numbers so positive and negative numbers and they work the different opposite ways so let's say that we have the bottom of the stack will be one two three so you can imagine the positive numbers work like an array so the more stuff you add to it the more the number grows so one will always be the bottom of the stack while the biggest number will be the top so you can have anything you can have six seven eight nine how much stuff you have anytime you add something it will grow there are negative numbers which work the other way so the top will always be minus one this is a great way to access the top of the stack by using minus one anytime you use minus one you know you will get whatever was the latest thing put on the stack whenever you use one you know you will get the first thing you ever put on the stack and if you of course if you only have one item on the stack minus one and one will give you the same thing so let's see this is minus two and yada 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 until one minus one two three four five six sorry guys minus six obviously it would be minus six here anyway <laughs> that's how it works okay anytime i add something now the minus one is going to be pushed up here and this will become minus two this will become minus three and so on and so on so it will grow in the negative direction remember this image very very important and let's try do a practical example so to push things on the stack usually you write lua push and if you write lua push you can investigate what kind of things you can push you can push strings numbers now numbers are either integers or whatever this is lua types so a number can be a float it can be anything or it could be an integer doesn't matter then you have a string nil is like a null value all right lua is really cool if, if something doesn't work or anything it will get the value nil so nil is always really good to have literals are like characters i'm pretty sure i need to check up on that but the important things are string nil number pretty much that so let's start off with a number push number number and let's push a 20 to the state now it's always important to give a state to these functions usually lua works all reference to one state all right that's why you can have multiple states i can push a number onto another state if i want to but we're using one state here so i pushed a number and to get something usually there are functions called two number two string so what it does is it takes whatever's on top of it the stack when you do two and it converts it that's why it's called two number it tries to convert it to a number so if i had a boolean on top and i'd use two number it would convert it to a number because a boolean is a one or a zero so it will convert that and it would work you don't have to do two boolean if you do two number on a string if that's on the top then it's going to return a zero it's going to return a nil value so that's kind of how that works you can also check if it's a number if it's something like that but if you do that please use the lua l versions because they're a lot faster the lua versions are a little slower now there isn't lua l versions for everything but lua l wherever you can use them use them so let's do this lua two number now i know that the last thing i pushed on the stack the only thing is a 20 and that's a number so i'm gonna do two number l and at what position in the stack do i want to get this number anywhere in the stack i can get it all right so our image if i if i want to get something at the position or minus one that would be the top if i want to get something at the position three that would be here and all that stuff and so on and so on so you can choose wherever you want to get it from it doesn't have to be the top but i want to get it from the top and you can use both one, one and minus one right now because we only have one thing on the stack i'm going to use minus one and i'm going to just say Control s and run this and you should get the 20 printed out right there all right maybe you can't see that 36 here hopefully you can see that now 20. maybe i'll zoom this in a little bit now we'll add a few more things to the stack all right let's add the string like we said so lua push string and we'll add my name here that's a string now what what was pushed first it was a 20 so that will be the bottom of the stack the next thing i pushed was my name that will be the top of the stack all right let's start with these two values here and i want to get my name hmm how do i get it now so think of this now again we have just a little stack here we have the 20 at the bottom and we have my name up top so it says 20 and my name up top pause the video guys try to figure this out on your own one two three there we go okay here comes the answer uh, to get the bottom of the stack remember one two or minus one 
minus two. So what do we want? We want to get, well, we want to get the top of the stack. We do minus one. We want to get the bottom. We do minus two. So let's get both of these. Let's say minus one will yield me this and minus two will yield me the number zero. Okay. Of course, what here is a good example of what I did wrong here. Lua two string. There you go. So now you'll get it as a string. Sorry, that was a prime example of how to do it wrong. You want to do two string and the string isn't here. The string is on minus one and minus two is the 20 because that was the last thing on the stack. So once you do this, you kind of know what you're putting where you got to know what you're putting and where it is in the stack. That's a, that's very important in Lua. So I know I push 20 first. So that's at the bottom. So when I do two number, I want to make sure it's the bottom of the stack. I'm doing two number and the top of the stack. I want to do two string. So now let's try to use the numbers. I know that the number is at the bottom. So that would be one, right? If you look at the image, that's one and the string is at the top. So that's at two run it again. There you go. So 20 and my name. Very nice. And I'll show you a trick now, guys. If you guys want to know the size of the stack, how many things are on the stack, this is a great way to practice. Okay. It's very, very easy to get lost in this stack. Always good to know how, how big it is and when stuff is removed because some functions remove things when you get them, for example, error messages and stuff like that. So you want to make sure to check which functions do what using this to see when the uh, stack gets smaller or bigger. So you can do Lua get top. L and this isn't getting the top of the stack. Like you'd think this gets the number of values on the stack. So it's like a size for a vector, not the top value. Remember that. So this will give you the size. So I'm going to write size here like that. And you'll see that you'll get the size two because we have two things on the stack. Great, great, great. If I add anything, it will be, if I add anything here, it will be greater three and so on and so on. So it's a good way to keep track of the stack. If you want to get the top of the stack and you don't want to use minus one, you can use get top. All right. So if I do get top here, I should get Daniel. I should get Daniel because that was the last thing I put on the stack at the position three and get top gets the position three. And of course you need to do Lua two string if, and that will give me the top because this is at the position. This will give back a three. There are three things on the stack and Daniel is at the last position of the stack, which is three. So, or the top of the stack. So it will give me Daniel. And if you want to pop the stack, what you can do is you can do Lua pop and you give the state and you say how many things you want to pop popping everything. The way I pop the entire stack is using, using get top, get tops gives me the amount of stuff on the stack and then I just pop that many things off the stack that gives me a null stack gives me an empty stack back. So if you do this, you'll see it's three at the beginning and it's zero at the end. There you go. That's a very simple Lua tutorial. This isn't what we're going to be doing in the engine all the time. Okay. But we're going to be using the stack and the push number and push stuff. So it's very important to get your head around how the stack works. Please remember this image. Try to practice this on your own. Use get top, use pop, use the two string, two number, all that stuff, push a bunch of things, just play around with it, print everything out and, and make sure you understand it and make sure you understand how to initialize Lua and how to close it. All right. So that's a very quick Lua tutorial for you guys. I'm going to remove all this here because we're not going to be needing it in the next video and we're going to start off building the engine from there. But thank you so much for sticking with me. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Bye bye.